campers today is a lazy afternoon and I find myself with nothing to do so I thought I would come check out uh, Animal Kingdom it's been a couple years I think since I've been here so uh, the weather is perfect it's cloudy and it's cool and the app shows low wait times for everything except Pandora so uh, much like I went to the Magic Kingdom the other day I, I have no itinerary I'm in no rush I'm gonna kind of lounge around and I definitely want to grab a beer while I'm here I'm in a beer mood this is good beer weather so come along with me let's go hang out check out Animal Kingdom found this trail and I just started walking down it because I'm exploring because every other time I've been here I've been in a big hurry to go hit the big rides or meet up with people and that's not the case today so looks like this trail just kind of goes under the tree of life I think I've ever been this close to it yeah how cool is that Right under the tree of life. I've never been over here before. I didn't even know how to get here. For those of you who aren't Disney World nerds and don't watch every single special that's ever been aired on TV, the tree of life back here has something like a bazillion different animals sculpted into it, but it's all in a, a concrete form. So there has to be something underneath there to support all the weight of that. And so they started with an oil derrick. That's the skeleton under there that supports the weight of all the decorative parts. And again, this is Central Florida, so it's also got to be built hurricane proof. And starting with the base of an oil rig was the perfect way to get that project off the ground. Use this information with Farmeritaville. This is definitely the most beautiful park as far as foliage and natural scenery. I mean, of course, Disney arranged it all and put it in this lovely fashion, but everything here is green and lush. This is actually the largest of the four Disney parks as far as footprint, and that is due to the animal enclosures uh, over on the safari where they've got elephants and giraffes and other large animals that need large places to roam around. For guests, I don't think it has as many attractions necessarily, but it's got the largest footprint. The sign said there were lemurs in here, but I don't see any. They may be taking a nap. I just noticed at the Discovery Trading Company up front, uh, like everywhere else around here, Christmas decor is up, but I really love these lanterns that they have with the different animals in them that is super cool and they almost look like they belong there year-round like the only thing that makes them look Christmassy is when you realize one of them is a reindeer but I think that is great fits the look of the place I had to start my day with some refreshment so I got a margarita and a beer I'm actually having the firefly margarita with Casamigos Reposado tequila Ancho Reyes liqueur lime juice simple syrup and pineapple juice don't worry I didn't memorize all that the table topper is right here so I just read that so assuming that's telling the truth that's what we've got That's good, that's got a bite to it. It's not too tarty and it's not too sweet. And uh, it's actually, it's got a spicy flavor up front, but then it goes sweet. I don't generally go for spicy margaritas because I don't like, you know, peppers and stuff with my tequila and my lime, but this is not bad. If you like spicy margaritas, you'll like this. If you don't go for spicy margaritas, you still might like this, and I don't like spicy margaritas. Uh, this is a great compromise right in the middle of the road. I also got a Tusker House lager, which I'll take with me when I'm done with the margarita, uh, because you can get two drinks per ID, and I didn't want to wait in line again. Let's see what kind of animals we can see on the gorilla trail. They said no food. They didn't say no drink. I, I asked, he let me in holding a beer. But he said, cover it when I get to the birds. 
differences between the okapi and the giraffe. The okapi is unsociable, shy, and solitary. And that is why it wants nothing to do with all the tourists. Get that damn camera out of my face. I'm gonna hide back here. You're not gonna get shit for your family vacation video. I think the Okapi uh, called the zebra and the meerkat and they're like, hey, these tourists are assholes. Go hide. Go to the back of your habitat. Make sure their vacation videos are full of emptiness and sadness. I see a zebra ass way back there. I can't even zoom in on it fast enough. It's walking away. Uh, now I can't see it, but he was back there. But I'm pretty sure he got the memo from the Okapi. Like, yeah, man, we're on strike. He's got his nap blanket. He's doing a snooze. See? I showed up with a big flock of tourists, and now that one's walking upstage with his blanket. Screw this. I'm not going to perform for you guys. And the gorillas are in the far corner. And the entire habitat where it's easy to see them is empty. So this is kind of a ripoff. Like we're at Disney's Animal Kingdom and, and there's, you know, the side side of water and the front side of water, but no back side of water. It's walled off. You want the back side of water, you gotta buy another park ticket. You gotta go to Magic Kingdom to see the back side of water. What a rip. And Golan black and white, Colobus monkey. No show, can't see it anywhere. All right, I moved on to beer number two. Got me a uh, Blue Moon, nothing fancy. Here's the real Disney magic. This was only $9. I remember when I was appalled at a $9 beer, and now I'm excited about a $9 beer, so cheers. I'm torn because Festival of the Lion King has no weight. You can just walk in, and the show's about 20 minutes away, but I don't know that I want to chug this beer. They won't let me take it in, but at the same time, it's sitting in air conditioning. I don't know what to do. Now to the unknowing, I might look like some random ass vlogger who's camped out behind a shut down uh, drink and ice cream stand in the middle of a walkway talking to a camera like a self-indulgent douchebag. But that's only half true because I've got two things I want to point out. One is that I am in the parks by myself right now and I suspect over the next several weeks I'll be in parks by myself a lot of the time. Now, there is a creepiness and a loneliness to that, definitely. Um, I wish I had friends here some of the time to, to, you know, share stuff with and hang out with. But there's also a, a freedom to this. I can go where I want and I can do whatever I want and I don't have to wait on people at the bathroom. I don't have to wait on somebody to get something to eat so that they can take their pills or anything like that. I can go and do whatever I want. However, a lot of the other people who are in the park are with large parties families, friends, etc. And when I'm walking through a crowded street, it's difficult to pass them because they they walk shoulder to shoulder and take up a lot of the roadway and are completely oblivious to the fact that they are just blocking traffic. So, much like driving, that's something you have to deal with, but by and large, everybody here is having a good time. They're just people, you know, so you can't really hold it against them. Second point that I want to touch on is that right over there is a river that runs through Animal Kingdom. I don't know the proper name for it right now. I know that it's fake. Disney built it. It's not like they found this beautiful river and said, let's put a park around this. No, Joe Rody and his friends said, we're going to build a river and it's going to be the best river ever. And I hear music, so this might be able to prove my point right now. That timing couldn't have been better, so maybe that was Disney magic. Maybe they heard me sitting over here in a dark corner talking to my camera like a jackass and said, send out the float. He's about to talk about the float. 
But that was actually my point. In my last video, I talked about how I hate parades, and I really do. Parades are stupid. But uh, because this park has this beautiful man-made river rolling through the middle of it, uh, their character cavalcades, which are not parades, they're like single float parades, as we established at Magic Kingdom the other day, um, they roll by on the water. And unlike land parades, I am not opposed to that. In fact, I'm very much for it because one, water. I like water. I like hot weather. You know, being out on a boat's cool. Honestly, I think if you were the driver of the boat with Mickey on it, that'd be a cool job. Because what do you do? You just do donuts on a man-made fake river all day with costume characters and they wave. And you don't have to do a lot other than look happy like you love your job. And if I was getting paid to drive a boat in circles, I mean, that wouldn't suck, honestly. But unlike uh, land cavalcades, it doesn't slow down traffic. I mean, people may run to one side of the road to see what's going on on the water over there, but it only lasts a few seconds and then it's gone. And uh, it is far less of a cluster than traditional on land, block the street, shut down foot traffic parades. And so I am all for this. You keep doing boat parades until the cows come home. Boat parades or water parades, water, I don't know what you want to call it, water cavalcade. There's probably some fancy name for it. I don't know. Um, I'm a theme park nerd that I, I appreciate the craftsmanship of this and I want to come here all the time, but I'm not a theme park nerd that I know every single name and title of every character and iteration of every show, blah, blah, blah. But I think I've made my point. All right, I came here with no mission and now I have a really uh, quasi half-assed mission, which is uh, parks open till seven, but we just time changed. Time fell back two days ago. So um, it gets dark pretty early, which means it'll be dark before seven. And I have never seen Pantera during nighttime. Did I say Pantera? Pandora, where's Avatar? Pandora, Pantera. I don't know, you can take the boy out of Dallas, but you can't take the Dallas out of the boy, I guess. Uh, Pandora, not Pantera, with all of its self-illuminating sidewalks and crap. I've never seen that in person. I've been there one other time during the daytime only for about an hour. Um, so yeah, I'm actually excited about that now that I remembered that it was here. This looks like animal shit in the middle of the bridge. Oh, it's actually just popcorn. Which just goes to prove that animals are neater than children. All right, the plants don't look weird yet, but I think we're getting towards the magical world of Pantera because uh, even though the plants look normal, they're piping in an obnoxiously high amount of like cricket noises and the lights right there don't look normal. They look very bizarre. Oh, yep, here we are. Welcome to the Valley of Montana. That's on the planet Pantera. Pandora. Pandora. Everything in Pandora is very themed. Love even just the lighting fixtures over the pathway. And the signage. I love the theming of the signage in Pandora. Africa to the left, Discovery Island to the right. All right, so here's the thing. A lot of stuff around here is named Discovery. Discovery Island, Discovery Cove, Discovery whatever. There's a million different things in Orlando called Discovery something or other. And there is a comedian, and I don't remember who to give credit to, but it wasn't me, who uh, I heard a while back that talked about Discovery Channel, and he called it Disco. It's on Disco, Disco, Disco Channel. And now every time I see the word discovery as part of a name, I can't not think of it. So whenever I see the word discovery, I shorten it to disco. So Disco Island is that way. Disco Cove and other things. And it totally changes your point of view on whatever it is that has the word discovery in it. Once you start calling it disco, I got to get a better view where there's not boring regular trees in the way of the giant fake trees that are part of Pandora.
That looks pretty cool. Now, because I know a thing or two about lighting, I can say that this is the crappiest time of day to get a picture of the floating rocks of Pantera, Pantora, because the sun is setting right behind it, and as you can see in the video, it's pretty just silhouetted. Not so much to the human eye, but uh, to any camera, it's just gonna be a big black shadow blocking out the sun because the sun is directly behind it. But that doesn't mean we can't walk through here and get a closer look at some of the plants and stuff. One thing that really impresses me from a design standpoint is that so much of this is just alien uh, flora and fauna, see me using big words, that they have incorporated, but there's also very much real living plant life in here that have been selected to you know, blend the world of uh, what's real and what's alien, and also can survive in the Florida tropical climate that we're in. Details, 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 even to just the tendons, the fibers of the plants uh, on this bridge that I'm walking across. I am beyond impressed with all that. Honestly, not, I mean, I'm not a big Avatar fan. I watched the movie once, and just like with Harry Potter, I only watched it after you know, they said they're making a theme park area out of it, but I, I mean, whether you're a fan or not, it just the attention to detail and the immersion is unbelievable. I just walked past the lady that had on my favorite t-shirt of today. It said, good moms say bad words, and I'm not a mom, but I completely believe that to be true from everything I've observed. Now I know I just said I haven't been here at night and I haven't and we're here during the day. So here's what bioluminescent ground looks like during the day. And I'm going to come back over here when it gets dark because I'm very excited to see this when the sun goes down. And I popped into the Nomad Lounge here at Animal Kingdom and this is another benefit to flying solo. Uh, there is a wait for tables, but because I'm a party of one, there was immediate seating at the bar, and I could just walk in and grab a beer. I've got the Wakula Hefeweizen. That's very good, very smooth. Almost has a like a banana taste to it. Very good. So I'm relaxing in here and I'm gonna grab a bite to eat and uh, then we will continue. I ordered the chicken and this is amazing. Probably one of the best things I've eaten since I've been down here. All right, I just finished up in the Nomad Lounge and hands down, some of the best food I've had on property in a long time, probably ever. I had the chicken Manchurian Nomad Bowl with chicken and rice and it was delicious. And then after that, uh, the server suggested the churros and I did read on the menu that the churros here are some of the best on property and I believe they are. So I went for it and I inhaled them. Uh, they're not on video because I ate them too fast. I didn't have time to take a video. They were that good. This is a hidden gem in Animal Kingdom. If you're here, uh, pop into Nomad Lounge or make a reservation at Nomad Lounge. Uh, great drinks, great atmosphere, and definitely some of the best food on property. I've been at Disney during the holidays. I've not been at Animal Kingdom, so seeing a giant uh, dinosaur skeleton with Christmas lights on it, I like. That's actually very cool. Everybody get down on the floor. Everybody ride the dinosaur. Standby wait time, 10 minutes. That usually means walk on. Now, 
Let's go get that dino. Styracosaurus. Not our dino. Warning. Meteor shower in range. Hadrosaur. Raptor. Time to get serious. Locking autopilot on homing signal. Still not our dino, but at least this one's a vegetarian. Computer, now what? Carnotaurus. That's it. Abort mission. Abort! Abort! Wait, you're... I forgot just how violent that ride is and how dark that ride is. Maybe it's all the beer talking in the middle of the day, I don't know. But <laughs> that's a great ride, really dark ride, literally and figuratively. Um, yeah, dinosaur. It's about six o'clock. The sun is already going down. It is getting dark very early as we fell back on time a couple of days ago. Uh, but we got an hour left in the park and Everest posted a 10 minute wait, which is also pretty much a walk on. So gonna hit Everest and then head back over to Pandora and check out Pandora in the dark, which is something I've never done. I've also never ridden Everest in the dark. I've only ridden it during the daytime and direct sunlight when it's hot. So this will be fun. Woo, Everest, man. That's such a great ride too, you know. I was gonna try to take video on it, but one, it's really dark, so nothing would have shown up that well. And two, uh, I was in single rider at the back and with this other lady, and I didn't want to ruin her ride by holding the camera out the entire time. But we were also in the very back of the train. And if you don't know roller coaster dynamics, you can Google this, there's a science to it. But when you're at the back of the train, it's a lot more violent ride. And a lot of people think that it's faster or something and it, it's not, the whole train moves the same speed there's no way you're going faster than the front of the train but it's when you accelerate you accelerate at different points than the front of the train does and it tends to feel more extreme than if you're sitting near the front of the train and that's where i was and it was dark and a lot of the, <laughs> the low-lying areas of this ride are not lit up so it's very very dark whether you're inside the mountain or outside the mountain but uh, a lot of fun nonetheless now we are walking through asia on our way over to pandora to see the bioluminescent landscape oh cool cool the tree of life is tree of lifing for nighttime There's a lot of music swelling and announcement making and stuff like something was happening and I think all that happened was the tree lit up but I gotta say the tree looks pretty freaking awesome lit up. The sound effects seem louder at night. I don't know if they are but they seem louder at night of bugs and stuff in the forest. Maybe they are. Maybe they've added new stuff already from a distance I'm seeing all kinds of cool stuff. Wow. This looks cool. Now my tech brain wants to find the, the self-illuminated stuff. This is fluorescent paint. This is fluorescence in the ground. You can see people's clothes glowing and the fluorescent lights are up there in the trees. But this is still very, very impressive. This looks amazing. I, if you think it looks good on video, it's even more amazing to see it in person. All 
right, Pandora wins Christmas decorating this year. You can take down all the crap in front of your house, you lost. Pandora has the best Christmas decorations. Yeah, in China, that's the same one. I have to say, I'm impressed. Uh, this looks sparkly and wonderful on camera, but to the naked eye, it's even more amazing. Like, video doesn't do this justice. I mean, and the lighting is stunning. There are lights hidden under the water, hidden behind leaves. Uh, it gives it a very natural, self-illuminating look, but they have done a really fantastic job. And the water, the smell of it, you can feel the mists of it, and you can see where it's flowing. I'm standing on a small bridge, and the first thing that's impressive to me, I noticed even during the daytime earlier, is the way they've done their fake rust. Incredibly convincing. The textures and layers look like metal peeling off. Very well done. But here at night, this is something you don't even notice during the daytime. The water is very clear, and it has all those rocks, and looks like a few coins people have thrown in, things. But this blue lighting shining under the water across it pops all of that texture and all those rocks off the bottom of the surface and it is really eye-catching when you're walking across this bridge at night and then of course the outer edges of the water are sprinkled with all of the bioluminescent alien plants i just want to say one more attention to detail thing walk around this path and there's this walkway into a cave and it's gated off and says staff only but Can y'all hear that? The closer you get, the louder the howling cave wind noise is inside of here. That is a impressive attention to detail. I was under the impression that the bioluminescent walkways were lit from beneath. And as impressive as this looks, it's a paint job and there's UV lights shining down on it. As I showed you earlier, you can tell everybody's shirts are purple and anyone wearing white is glowing purple. That does not make this any less impressive looking, but I'm a little disappointed. I was under the impression that that was lit from beneath, but apparently it's not. Oh well, still looks amazing, still looks beautiful, and now everybody is glowing. I was gonna try to ride uh, River Journey, but the park closes in 20 minutes, and it's it's at an 80 minute wait, and the park closes in 20 minutes. And I don't wanna be stuck here that late, so I'm gonna pass on it this time. But I have ridden it before, and it's a beautiful ride. Uh, if you've never ridden it, or you've never seen video of it, imagine all the stuff I've shown you in the past couple minutes about the outside area, and just on steroids. There's even more details and even more color and even more cool stuff. And I will come back while I'm here and I'll ride it and I'll take the camera on it. But for now, you'll just have to use your imagination. The tree at the front gate looks even better at night, all lit up. And I don't even, I'm not even a sucker for Christmas stuff, but that looks nice. Well, thank you for joining me for this lazy afternoon stroll through Animal Kingdom. I will be back to Animal Kingdom because I want to ride more rides and I want to see more stuff. But uh, today was nice. I wasn't in a rush and I got to enjoy what I got to enjoy and eat some great new food that I hadn't eaten before. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell because I'm going to be posting a whole lot more videos like this in the near future and hopefully for the long term. Thank you guys for watching. Go do stuff.